So has Facebook done enough? Let's bring in Roger McNamee of Elevation Partners, one of the early Facebook investors. Roger, it's always great to speak with you. Um, you know, I think it's uh, commendable that Facebook and Twitter endeavor to do this. The problem as an investor that I would have, and I'm not an investor, let's make that clear, is that we don't know how much more there is. They can say they're removing exactly. this many accounts, this many pages, et cetera. We're not sure where that is, in the, in the, and, I'm, and they probably don't know either. But we don't really have a grip on, on whether or not they have a grip on the problem. Yeah, so, Melissa, I completely agree with you. The good news here is that for the first time, the companies are getting ahead of problems in the political arena and bring them to light before the election that those people were trying to affect. So that's, that's very, very positive. But I'm afraid, and I don't know this, but I think this is likely, that the number of bad pages and accounts that are out there are a little bit like cockroaches, that when you kill one of them, you know you haven't solved the problem, that somewhere hiding out there are going to be hundreds more. And I'm sure that that's true here. And what I like about this, and I think as a shareholder what people should be focused on, is that these companies for years depended on their users to report problems. So they had no internal infrastructure for spotting things ahead of time. And they're just beginning to do that for the first time. And I think this is a positive sign because in this one occasion, it absolutely worked. Now, to be clear, FireEye, which is in a security firm, uh, contributed to this as well. And so they, you know, they've still got the training wheels on, but we are trusting as a country, we're trusting our midterm elections to Facebook, YouTube, Google and uh, and to uh, Twitter. And that, I think, is not something anybody should feel comfortable about yet. Not because those companies don't mean well, but simply because this is a really hard problem right. and they're just beginning to get their arms around it. So, Roger, you mentioned um, that you're a Facebook investor. I know that or I understand that yeah. you, you have sold shares. Um, at this point, going into the midterm election, since that is a concern of yours, would you be looking or more inclined to sell more shares ahead of the midterms? Since you yeah, think this is listen, a cockroach it's a great, problem. It's a, great, it's a great question. I actually have turned over my position uh, to the money manager who uh, works with my assets so I don't get involved in the decisions any longer because I've been in, you know, in an act, uh, essentially an activist trying to campaign to have better control of social media. So I, I don't have any idea what's going to happen. I have no personal interaction with it. And to be clear, I don't think we're going to know what's happened until November 6th, right, when the election actually happens. And, you know, my fingers are crossed. I really am, am cheering for Facebook and Google and, and uh, Twitter to, to be successful in this. But I'm not hyper confident because I think the problem is really, really complex. Hey, hey, Roger, it's Tim. It's, it's extremely complex. And it seems to me that Twitter is now telling you that they actually are fixing their product and it's never been whole. Uh, and as a shareholder, that would bother me, uh, especially because I don't get the sense that management really knows how to fix it. And when your core product is data, um, this seems like a major problem. Uh, in fact, that is precisely the issue that the you know, we're not dealing with a problem with social media. We're dealing with a problem with advertising business models that are dependent on attention. And when you do depend on attention in order to get your economics, you have to create networks the way Facebook, Google, and, and Twitter have done. And for all intents and purposes, they're unpatrolled and undefended. The thing we also have to pay attention to is that foreign interference is not the only problem in this election. I fear it's the only one we're looking for. But the Cambridge Analytica data set is still out there. And, you know, the Trump administration still has it. Presumably other Republicans have access to it. So the ability to do bad things with bad data on Facebook in particular is still there. And, you know, I don't know that anybody's even trying to prevent that. And so uh, I, I worry a lot. I think these, these companies have insinuated themselves into the public square and they didn't prepare for the responsibilities that come with that. So even if they wanted to be really good citizens on this, and until recently they didn't show any interest in that, but even if they wanted to be good citizens, this would be a really hard problem to solve. And our democracy depends on them getting this right. All right, Roger, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Great My to get your pleasure. thoughts. My pleasure. Roger McNamee. Everybody McNamee go out and vote. <laughs> of Elevation Partners. Um, Karen, how much of a concern is this as a Facebook shareholder? Uh, it's, it's definitely a concern. I mean, I do think they're doing the right thing, trying to weed out what they call bad actors. Uh, but I, I think that's been weighing on the stock, right, when he was 
when he was on, on the Hill, and you know, certainly he was under pressure there. I think that I think of Facebook, Google having similar problems. It seems to weigh most heavily on Facebook. Uh, just because they happen to be the poster child, but I'm still long. I still think it's a really good business, still long alphabet. It's funny, you know, you talk about weeding out bad actors, you know, like you said, I think you said it, you know, Twitter's trying to be out there, Jack Dorsey's trying to be out there, he's on this press tour, but, you know, there was something really interesting in early July when they announced that they suspended 70 million user accounts as they try to figure out what's real and what's not, and, you know, I, all you have to do is look at the real Donald Trump's Twitter handle, and he hasn't lost one. I mean, like, so, so the, the, the net hasn't been an increase because there's been reports that maybe 25% are his are fake. So I'm not, I have no confidence that they're doing anything. I have a, a confidence. Well, neither does the market. That, Facebook's totally underperformed since that well, I'm announcement. I'm talking about Twitter. It, so I'm talking okay, about Twitter but, here in particular. And, and so it's I don't know how the. Well, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I guess my point is there's some things in clear sight that are pretty evident, and I don't have a great sense that they're doing what they need to do to clean up the platform.